Good afternoon from the garden and welcome to today's tomato review video. We filmed a video like this last year when we were growing I think six or seven varieties in the greenhouse. This year we're growing seven. Uh, two of those are our favorites from last year and there are five new ones. And there were some complaints last year that the video did not include tasting. So today I brought with me two special guests, my children Esther and Sebastian, and they're going to do a taste test with me. So first I'm going to head to the greenhouse and let you see what the plants look like, what the trusses look like uh, and how the plants are doing. And uh, then we'll do the taste test. I don't know, in the meanwhile you guys can pump some water because we don't, we have never enough of that. I have talked pre in previous videos about how we use the greenhouse in summer. We do a simple crop rotation here and uh, divide the greenhouse in thir three parts. In one part we grow plants from the nightshade family, which this year is only tomatoes. Then we have um, the cucumber family in another part, that's uh, gherkins, cucumbers and melons. Those are not uh, thriving by the way because of the heat that we've experienced the past weeks. And then the last third is sweet potatoes and some basil. The size of the greenhouse and the way we grow the tomatoes means that we can fit in nine plants. We put the plants about 45 to 50 centimeters apart. And um, as you can see, I'm pruning them to a single stem. I have uh, strings attached to the top of the greenhouse and then I wind the plants um, kind of around the string uh, and I remove or all side shoots. I grow mostly cherry tomatoes um, or small fruited tomatoes because I found, find that this type of tomato is usually easier to grow, uh, ripening earlier and overall more productive than the very varieties with very large fruits. Um, last year most of the varieties that we grew were hybrids but this year only two of them are hybrids which means that um, whatever we like we'll be able to save our own seeds. So let's have a closer look at the varieties that we're growing. Here in the corner is a very well-known variety, many people's favorite, Sun Gold. It is a recent, um, quite recent introduction from Japan, from the Tokita Seed Company. And here you can see the size of the trusses. They are orange tomatoes, very sweet, um, but they're a hybrid, so that means you're not able, we will not be able to save seeds from this one. Um, most of the trusses I find I, are like this, quite elongated, but when you look over here, this one is kind of split. It's like multi-trust, but it's not, this is not typical of the plant. And um, what I also should mention is that this is the variety that starts ripening the earliest. And last year when we grew it, it also gave us the last fruits. It, it kept fruiting into November. So overall, it gave us the largest harvest of all the plants that we grew last year. Next is um, Berry's Crazy Cherry, which is a very recent introduction of, uh, by Bradley Gates from Wild Boar Farms. It was introduced in 2015, so really very recently. And I think the most uh, striking thing that something you immediately see notice is the size of the trusses. There are so many tomatoes in a single truss. They're um, pale yellow, oval and pointed. One disadvantage that I've noticed is that they really easily fall off the plant. Like usually when you just touch it, no, 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 nothing happens. But usually when you touch them, they just start falling off. Um, and they're not only, not only the trusses are very large, but they're also produced quite close together. So I would say that in the first meter, you can probably, you already get something like five or six trusses. So that's definitely a, a super productive variety. Next, white cherry. It's not actually white, it's more like ivory to yellow. Uh, also a cherry tomato, as you can see. The trusses are not super large. There are, uh, there are only eight tomatoes here, about 10 here. The trusses get a little larger uh, as the plant gets bigger. And there are some multi-trusses multi on the top. Um, 
it's also it has a weird way of growing something that i noticed in the i think in the in berries crazy cherry as well you can see that the plant just produces keeps growing after the truss uh, it's also quite recent it was introduced in 1998 okay over here we have the second hybrid of uh, uh, among the varieties that we're growing this year it's called Asterina and uh, it is according to some people it's even tastier than the sun very popular sun gold so we'll see uh, in any case it's super productive uh, you can see that the trusses it's, it's it has multi trusses and there can be 30 to 40 fruits per truss it started fruiting very early it started ripening very early uh, the trusses are also quite close together so i think those are the probably the most productive among the varieties that we're growing uh, we have two plants of this one i must admit that the reason i chose this variety is in part because my daughter is called esther so we'll do the taste test later and we'll see whether my children think that this is a better tasting variety than the sun gold the most striking variety uh, among all the tomatoes that we're growing is this one, Brett's Atomic Grape. You can see it has all kinds of colors, uh, uh, purple, green, yellow, it's striped. Uh, it is another introduction from Wild Boar, Far Boar Farms and it has uh, become very popular very fast. On the Baker Creek website they tout it as their uh, favorite tomato. It's a, it's a very, I would also say it's the most Instagrammable tomato. When I looked uh, at the hashtag uh, Brett's Atomic Grape Tomatoes on Instagram, there were over four, 500 posts. Um, but um, the question is, of course, is the taste worth it? Is the taste good as well? Uh, uh, when you look at productivity, I think it's uh, productivity is very good. The uh, fruits are larger than in the other varieties they were supposed to be according to the description they're supposed to be grape to plum sized um, i would say these are a lot larger i have not seen plums this size um, but otherwise the, it matches the description also the foliage is a little weird i even thought when i planted i thought they might have some kind of virus and i was about to pull them out but they're um they seem to be healthy they the leaves are dark green the tomatoes are fruiting well growing fast the trusses are close together and uh, also uh, quite a lot of fruits in one truss another variety that we're growing is called isis candy it's also a cherry tomato but more kind of orange darker than the uh, than the white cherry but I have some doubts whether this really is the variety that it should be or whether there was a mix up with the seeds because uh, Isis candy should have kind of like a yellow base color and then orange and overlaid with orange and reddish stripes and that's not really the case here these are just uh, orange tomatoes um, the trusses are quite close together as you can see but they're not huge they're I think comparable to the sun gold probably. The last variety that I'm going to show you is our perennial favorite black cherry tomato. I also grew it last year so I talked about it in the video last year as well. Uh, I've been growing this variety for about 10 years because um, it's our favorite. We'll see in today's tasting whether we'll find another variety that can compete uh, with black cherry. I've been saving the seeds. It's not an. It's not a hybrid, so you can do that. Um, um, contrary to what I originally thought, this is not an heirloom. It's quite a recent variety introduced in 2003 by a grower from Florida. Um, as far as the productivity is concerned, the trusses are quite large, and sometimes they also kind of split so that you have like more. Uh, multi trusses and then in that case you can get a lot of fruits per truss but um, they're also a bit larger than the other varieties that we're growing so now i'm going to pick some fruits on every variety and we'll do the taste test OK, 
Okay, let's start the taste test. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> yes. That okay, right I think right. I'll do it in the in the same volgorde order. Order. <laughs> <laughs> order as I picked the tomatoes. So let's start with the sun gold. And I thought I would also give you the size. Uh, it is about one inch and two and a half centimeters in metric measurement. So you get one, you get one, Thanks. and I get one. And now give me your honest opinion. <laughs> okay, Sebastian. Mm. It's a bit too sweet. I like them a bit more sour. I like the sweetness. It just has kind of an odd aftertaste. Yeah. I don't know. Something about the aroma is a bit odd. Okay. That was an honest opinion on Sun Gold. What's your honest opinion? <laughs> I think it's a little too sweet too. I think I, I, I like the tomatoes to have a better balance of sweet and sour. But it's a, it's a nice tomato. Okay, number two. I think it was Berry's Crazy Cherry, I hope. And these one, uh, these are a little more um, oval, and they are four centimeters or what is it like one, one and, and a half, half inch? <laughs> one and a half inch. Okay, Sebastian, here's one for you. Thank Esther you. Esther gets one, and I get one. I like how translucent these are. Yeah, they're really, they're really, they're pretty. really pretty. Yeah, and it's also like one of the most productive ones. Interesting shape. This one is definitely a little more sour than the sun gold, I'd say, but not, not like a sour tomato. What do you guys think? This one's honestly a little flavorless in my opinion. Yeah. Like there's not much flat. taste to it. Not mm -hmm. much depth, I guess. Yep. Okay. Guess that's you asked for honest opinion. Yeah, sure. <laughs> We're just gonna trash all the tomatoes. Okay, don't hit okay. me. <laughs> Next up is Estherina, and like I said, this one is much larger than the other varieties. It's about, I think, three and a half centimeters. Yeah, three yeah, and a half. Right. And one and a half inches approximately, but it's like it's round in um, compared to the to the crazy cherry, bright crazy cherry. And like I said, I chose this variety in part because. Esther is uh Please Esther. watch the knife. Yeah. <laughs> You've already cut yourself once. That was years ago, man. <laughs> Thank you. You've learned how I think it would be like to be completely um scientific, we should all taste the same fruit, but that's true. Okay. Very sweet. I like this one though. I mean, I might be biased because it's named after me, but you know. It's not, not really named after you. I can choose to interpret it that way. Mm -hmm. Wait, why do you get another half? You want another half? Yeah. Then I want another opinion. In the beginning it's a bit sweet, but after that it becomes a bit more sour. I quite like it. What's your opinion? I like it. I think it's better balanced and it has a bit more taste than the crazy one. Well, Crazy cherry, Brett's mm. crazy cherry, Barry's crazy cherry. White cherry, there were just two fruits ripe, so that also shows you that the productivity is, I think, worse than the, in the other varieties. Uh, it's, this one is three centimeters, this one's a lar little larger, three and a half perhaps, which is one and a half inches. So, shall we just share one fruit? Sure. Or you guys get this one and I taste the other one. Thanks. That one looks a little riper, to be honest. The one that I've got? Yes, it looks a bit darker. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, you can retaste. <laughs> this one's quite sour. You can try this one as well. Because yeah. I did not think it was sour. But that might be that the one yeah, was not. It, it, didn't, it was a bit greenish. Yeah, yeah this one's bigger. definitely less sour. <laughs> you still have that accent. Okay. Yeah, this one's better. It's still definitely not my favorite, though. It's quite good. Nothing exceptional, though. Yeah, no, exactly. Not, nothing wrong with it, but not an exceptional taste. Mm. Bread's Atomic Grape. 
like I said, um, the description was that they're grape to plum sized and they are, like this one is one of the larger fruits, but it's uh, eight centimeters, like three and a half inch, mm, three inches, three inches. They're definitely the prettiest ones. Very colorful. Yeah. Yeah, they look interesting for sure. <laughs> Okay, I will not influence you, but I will tell you what that colleague's thought when he gave them one. Thank you. It's green should on we the be inside worried? as well. <laughs> no, cool. you should not be worried. Oh. We ate, uh, we already ate those. Like, you should maybe have the, have yeah. you, haven't you tasted the one before? Martin. The skin's really thick, so it's a bit hard to bite through. Yeah, definitely. true. Mm. Mm. The taste is peculiar. It doesn't taste exactly like any other tomato. Yeah, it definitely has the most different uh, out there taste, I'd say. Mm. But is I like it? it. I think it might be it might be right. like personal thing. Like some people might love it, some people might hate it, maybe. Like, I feel like there's something smoky to it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it has a yeah. it has a certain like aroma that you can't really place. I think, and um, well, the interesting thing is when my husband took all these varieties to work and had his colleagues taste, they all loved this one, which I would not really expect because I would not say it's like a crowd pleaser in the way Sun Gold is. But you know, apparently there are enough people who really like it, and I do too. Last one. Black cherry, our perennial favorite. It's not black. It's not black, sorry. <laughs> there, are, there are no tomatoes that are truly black. Thank you. And this one comes pretty close. Yeah, it's like dark purple to yeah. almost That's black. That's a nice color. Yeah. Trying to keep it on track. <laughs> <laughs> well. It's like, let's get back to black cherry. Sour, tasty. Like yeah, it. sweet sour. It's not just sour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like for me, this is like what the tomatoes should taste like, basically. Yeah, this one's it's really still, good. I'm, I'm afraid that it's still um, uncontested. Or would you say Estrina is better? Do you want to go yeah, back I'd and taste one? I have to compare them side by side to okay. make, make a qualified decision. Um, of course, you want more, more tomatoes. You can have all the tomatoes. Tomatoes, tomatoes, or everything. Yeah, I mean, I like Asturina better because mm -hmm. it's slightly sweeter and there's slightly more flavor to it, I think, than the black cherry. The black cherry is nice, but it's also a little off or a little less. Agree to disagree. A little more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your opinion? I prefer the black cherry. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I do too, Fair but enough. I think I think that maybe Estrina is like more. I want to say approachable. Like <laughs> <laughs> I think more people would like that one than the black cherry because yeah. it has it has like black cherry has a little more outspoken uh, yeah, flavor. I mean, I but think if you gave them to a kid, like a kid would definitely prefer Estrina over black cherry. Do you remember Most the times. time that we brought some tomatoes to the Czech Republic and then our nephew who was, I think he was really like three or something yeah. and he was after them like it was candy. It True. was just, yeah. that was so he unexpected. Really them. But I think those were like the tiny cherry tomatoes, right? Mm -hmm. Like the bush tomatoes. I think we had, to, like that was years ago, so I don't remember what varieties we were tasting then, but I was surprised by how much he loved them. So, okay. What's the verdict? So what's your numbered one, Sebastian? Black cherry just uh, remains champion. Okay, Esther? I mean, I think Estrina, it seems really cheesy to say that. But I think you're very I, biased. I do personally. actually like the flavor best. Okay, I opinion. think I would, I don't know, I'm a little torn between black cherry and Brad's atomic grape, but just because I like peculiar flavors, and yeah. this one is the most outspoken one. So but so for me, I think that's a tie, those two. I can see why uh, he chose the atomic grape name. <laughs> Must have been some kind of radiation to make it go like this. <laughs> no, I think it, it's all uh, natural. It's our natural breeding methods. Okay. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tomato tasting video. We did. Uh, 
Definitely. <laughs> if you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what your favorite cherry tomato varieties are. Happy gardening!